As we remain standing, we go into the word of God. I take my text this morning from Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58, we're going to read only one verse, verse 11. I'm going to ask you this morning to join me in the reading of verse 11. Isaiah 58, at the count of three, let us go, one, two, three. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. This is the Lord this morning introducing himself afresh to us. The word of the Lord came to Isaiah and through Isaiah saying the Lord will guide you continually. And if you let him guide you, he will satisfy your soul even in famine. And strengthen your bones, you'll be healthy. And you shall be like a watered garden. And like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. This morning, I want you to know that this scripture means that God's plan for you is that you will thrive even in tough times. I don't think you heard me. This means that God's plan for you is that you will thrive even in tough times. This morning I entitled my message, Thriving in Tough Times. I didn't say surviving. I said thriving in tough times. Father, this morning, as we look into your word, We understand now that you are God of all seasons. That your covenant of blessing us and keeping us does not exist only during good times. That in tough times, you said you will satisfy our soul. What a wonderful God you are. Thank you for the sure mercies of David. That wherever life takes us, And when the seasons of life begin to change, that the loving kindness and the tender mercies of the Lord keeps us, season through season, even unto the end. Oh, Father, blessed is your name. Glorify Jesus this morning. Let your power be unleashed against everything contrary to us. Cause a revival of our faith. That we can stand square in tough times. Knowing that the Lord is in our boat. We glorify your name. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm just going to take a quick moment to acknowledge. A fellow distinguished minister of the gospel. Who is. Also, Mommy Chukura's very, very good bosom friend and ardent supporter of Goldcrest Family Center. She is the president of the Asomagwa Foundation United States and a partner to Goldcrest, Dr. Mrs. Linia Asomogba. You're welcome, Mommy. God bless you. Thank you for the good work that you're doing. I recognize you when I walked in. You remember me too. A round of applause for her. Come on now. And those around you, shake her hand. Show her some love. What's going on? (laughs) Hallelujah. This morning, I want you to know that God's ability to bless you is not limited to when the economy is booming. He will do it even in tough times because he's the God of all seasons. Where is your amen? Amen. I said, where is your amen? amen? If your God can only help you when the economy is booming. You have not met the king of kings. His ability to keep me and to provide for me goes beyond the state of the economy. I want to introduce to you again the king of kings who is king of all economies. And in this tough season of Nigeria, may the word of the Lord be fulfilled that 
the Lord satisfies our soul in whatever we're going through in the name of Jesus. This morning, I want you to understand something. To thrive, I didn't title my message, Surviving in Tough Times. I know you came to church this morning thinking, Pastor, I just want to survive. Someone is saying, ah, if only you knew my situation. But you see, that is what you think. I'm telling you what God said. God said, beyond survival, you can thrive. Can you say amen? amen? To thrive is to get on, is to do well. It is to have more than enough. Somebody say more than enough. If you can say it, you will have it. Say more than enough. More than enough money. More than enough joy. More than enough peace. More than, uh, more than enough friendship. Say amen. Say another amen. More than enough MTE. Can you say that? More than enough MTE. That is your portion. You know, some time ago, I taught you, I said, God will take you from not enough to just enough to more than enough. But I'm going to put it in over gear this morning. You, you're wondering where I'm going. All right. Psalm 37 verses 18 to 19. I read from the New Living Translation of the Bible. New Living Translation. Psalm 37, 18 to 19. I'm preaching on the subject, thriving in tough times. You will not die. You will live to declare the glory of God in the name of Jesus. It says day by day. I like that. The Lord takes care of the innocent. Help me not so much say he's talking about me. Day by day, the Lord takes care of the innocent. And they will receive an inheritance that lasts forever. Verse 19 says, they will not be disgraced in hard times. You didn't hear what I said. The way things are, the way economy is, I'll read it again. They will not be disgraced in hard times. It goes on to say, even in famine. It means hard times is different from a famine. They will not be disgraced in hard times. Even in famine, they will have more than enough. Help me look at your neighbor and say, that is my own portion. It talks about tough times, hard times, and it talks about famine. They will not be disgraced in the hard times. As a pastor, I hear people's problems. And there are lots of problems going on around. Once the economy starts slowing down, money starts slowing down. When money starts slowing down, families start fighting. When families start fighting, pastor has more work to do. But you will not be disgraced in hard times. Disgrace means that there used to be grace. Disgrace means there used to be joy. Disgrace means that it used to be well. Let me say it again and let me see whether you will not jump and say amen. They will not be disgraced in hard times. The Bible says even in famine. Toba Dojue. If he gets that far, he says, even in famine, God will make sure you have more than just enough. You will have more than enough in the name of Jesus. I want you to keep your eye on that MTE, more than enough. There are people that came to church thinking, can I afford to give an offering? If you are that person, this scripture will be fulfilled in your life. I want to show you this morning how this blessing works. Last Sunday, I was talking about the sure message of David. And I read some um, Isaiah 55 to you. And how he says that you will satisfy your soul in abundance. You will delight your soul in abundance. Now, but 
What about the process? When God says something, please, I want you to ask someone to enlighten you about the process. Because if you don't understand the process, you can abort it by your lack of knowledge. I'm going to show you two things. There was a time in the, there was a kind of famine where 5,000 people were walking with the Lord. Three days they had been with him. And when they got to the wilderness, they were so famished, they were about to faint. And there was no food for them. And Peter said, even if we had money, there are no supermarkets or markets around to feed them. This is trouble. Send them away. The natural thing for a man to do is to avoid responsibility. Peter says, send them away. Jesus says, I am not like you. When my friend is troubled, I will not send them away. He said, what do you have? They said, ah, only a boy has five loaves and two fish. I'm talking about satisfying your, your, your soul in farming. Five loaves and two fish. He said, that's fine. He says, I'll teach you what Isaiah was saying. He said, tell them to sit down. And that talks about obedience. Sit down. You can't see the food, but sit down. Oh my God, I'm preaching now. You can't see the food. Sit down in fifties and hundreds. He said, give me the five loaves and two fish. He blessed it and said, share it out. When they shared out the food, Bible says every one of them, 5,000 people, not counting the women and the children, they ate to their feel. That is to their satisfaction in a wilderness place. There was no food, there was no money. And he said, let me prove it that Isaiah was speaking of me. He says, take whatever is left over, put them in baskets. There were 12 baskets full. Someone say more than enough. Say more than enough. Now I want to show you in Genesis 26. Verses 1 to 3. The process of how this happens. Maybe some people know the scripture. But it hasn't worked for you. Because you didn't understand the process. You didn't follow the process. I read Genesis 26 from verse 1. It says there was a famine in the land. Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham question is Abraham the friend of God went through famine yes did he go through one famine no he went to at least two famines can I tell you something just because you're a child of God does not mean you won't go through trouble there was famine in the land fact and it was a different famine from the one in the days of Abraham and the son of Abraham that was given by promise called Isaac or the laughter of a man's life went into famine. Just because you are born by the anointed does not mean seasons will not change for worse. Boy, he's the God of all seasons. And Isaac went to Abimelech. Isaac went from where he was. Famine has a way of sending you in another direction. Farming has a way of causing people to beg. People that they never used to think they would beg. Why are you all quiet? Farming causes people to move house. From a nice area to a worse area. Farming causes people to not to pay their rent and then become a squatter. So Isaac left where he was and went to Abimelech the king of the Philistines in Gerar. The Philistines were not the friends of the Jews. Sometimes farming will make you make friends with people. You normally don't make friends with. Then the Lord appeared to him. Verse 2. As soon as a farming. And somebody said, but Lord, why didn't you divert the farming? Why did you stop the farming? After all, this is the son of promise. Can I tell you something? In every if every corner of the globe of the earth there is no place that has only one weather seasons change even if you move to the to gira wherever you go seasons change and not every season is going to be palatable for you you might as well come to understand that listen things will happen that what is what is important is who is in your boat The Lord appeared to Isaac. Somebody say at the right time. You know, the Lord appeared to him. I didn't hear Isaac crying. 
The Lord timed his appearance. It is at the time of famine that friends disappear. It was in the time of famine, the friend that sticked closer than the brother appeared. And some of you that give your friends more than you give the Lord, you talk to your friends more than you talk to the Lord, let me tell you, oh, tiri famine. It did die here for. But I thank God for the love of my soul. He appeared to Isaac when Isaac needed a friend to show up. And said to Isaac, do not go down to Egypt. Because in the time of famine, we make quick judgments. We make panic decisions. We quickly want to arrest the situation. Is it true or not? I said, is it true or not? And the Lord says, do not go down to Egypt. This was at the time that the Bible did not recall that Isaac said I was going anywhere. And somebody begins to say, why would the Lord say something that the man has not said? No, 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 you don't have to say it with your lips. You have said it in your heart. Do not go down to Egypt. I know you're thinking about it. I know that in your situation, people normally go down to Egypt. And the word is down. Most times when we hasten to try and solve our problems with our own sense, we end up going down instead of going up. Don't go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I shall tell you. The scripture I read this morning, Isaiah 58 verse 11 says, If the Lord will guide you continually, he will be able to satisfy your soul in drought. So this is the Lord appearing to the man and telling him, trying to guide him. The question is, who is your guide? Your panic decision, is it of the Lord? Do not go. Do you have a relationship with God that he can talk to you? Can he tell you where to go? Live in the land I shall tell you. Verse 3 says, don't only live there, dwell in this land. It says, if you do that, and so I will be with you, his presence, and what? Bless you. And in verse 6, this is Isaac's response. In verse 6, the Bible says, so Isaac dwelt in Gerar. One of the shortest verses in the Bible. God appeared to a man who had made his plans. God appeared to a man who needed to make quick decisions. He was already trying to put his plan in place. God interrupted him. The Lord spoke to him. The Lord told him where to go. The Bible says he dwelt in the word so means that irrespective of his own thinking, irrespective of his own feeling, irrespective of what he had put in place, so in consequence, Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Let us see what happened in verse 12 to 13. The Bible says, then Isaac sowed in that land, read with me, and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Which land? The land the Lord showed him. You see, normally when you, you see, in farming, it doesn't mean there's nothing. Just like the feeding of the 5,000. The Lord says, I know there's farming, but there will be something. He said, what do you have? Five loaves and two fish. To the widow of the prophet, he said, what do you have? A jar of oil. He says, in this case, uh, Isaac had something left and he sowed what he had. Normally what you sow in farming, the sun will scorch it, it will not produce. But if God shows you where to sow what is left, may we not waste what is left. May the enemy not mess up what is left. So he sowed in that land that the Lord showed him and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. A hundredfold is not hundred percent. It's a hundred percent times a hundred percent. Now that would have been enough for me. If everybody else was going through farming, their seed was dying, and I saw what I have, and I got not 100%, I got 100% times 100%, I would say that's fine. But God didn't stop there. May God not stop there when it comes to us as well in Jesus' name. The Bible says, and the Lord blessed him. The question is why? 
Why? He has already reaped. What are you blessing him for? Listen, where the Lord spoke to him, he says, dwell in this land. I will be with you and bless you. I'm talking about a consequential blessing based on complete obedience. Sometimes the Lord will say, go to a place and we will visit the place. We don't dwell there. And many people, because you have decided where you're going, God can't get you to dwell where he wants you to dwell. He says, if the Lord will guide you continually, he will satisfy your soul. If God cannot guide you, you're on your own. And when it comes to farming, nobody needs to be on their own. So Isaac, the Bible says, and the Lord blessed him. Let's read. After the blessing, what happened? No, no, I said after the blessing, there was a full stop. What happened? The man began and and one blessing. He began, he continued until he became. May that blessing resonate in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't understand what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the kind of blessing that you need to go back for another blessing. The man began, continued until he became. The man became one with the word prosperity. It's not that he had prosperity. It's not that he was moving with prosperity. He became one with prosperity. If you wanted to understand prosperity, they say, look at Isaac. There's a woman here. If they want to say, happily ever after, I pray they will say, look at this woman. There's a man in our midst. They say, you want money? Look at money. Nobody said Amen. I don't want to be your pastor. I, nobody said amen in this church. Yeah. What? You think I want to be pastor of poor people? Lie, lie. That's why I'm praying for you. Okay, one woman here. When they say you want money, let me show you money. Yeah. I want only women in this church. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. Praise God. The man began to prosper. Why three words? continued prospering until he didn't stop until he became very prosperous. You know, three words here or three segments began, continued, become. Began is more than enough. Continued prospering is much more than enough. Becoming very prosperous is much, much more than is enough. Which one do you want? Not enough? Just enough? More than enough? Much more than enough? Or much, much more than enough? Let me hear a much, much more than enough. Hallelujah! No, 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 no. That's more than enough. Hallelujah. Let me hear much more than enough. Hallelujah. Let me hear much, much more than enough. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One blessing. The man began. The man continued. God didn't have to come back to give him a second blessing. Somebody that will catch the spirit of this word, this will be the only sermon you're going to need to hear about prosperity. You become unstoppable in the name of Jesus. It was in the midst of farming. Where does light shine more? Is it not in darkness? If you made money when money was on the street, you can't tell whether it's God. Somebody this year before December, your bank, your bank, will overflow in the name of Jesus people will say how did you do it when everybody there was a casting down why is it your own you began to prosper you continue to prosper until you became very proud who is that better shout amen somebody saying I'm waiting for the economy to bounce back supposing the economy doesn't bounce back in one year Somebody say, hey, they will employ when, when the government starts spending money. Listen, 
the government of God is superior to the government of anybody. And the economy of heaven is superimposed upon every other economy. I don't know about you, but God is going to take me to MMMTE in the name of Jesus. Everybody likes they continue to be blessed until you become very prosperous. But how many people notice that when the Lord spoke to him, the Bible says, Isaac chose to dwell in Gerar. How many people know that the con- contemporary English version of the Bible in verse 6 of Genesis 26 says, when God spoke, the Bible says, Isaac moved to Gerar. There are people like us, whatever we made up our mind to do, even God cannot move us. Even a caterpillar cannot change our opinion. Are you here? Isaac had taken a position about the famine. His father, he saw his father go through it. He saw this one coming, he had made his plans. But the contemporary version of the Bible says, when the Lord appeared to him, when the Lord says, do not go, when the Lord says, go to this place, this Bible says, so Isaac moved to Gerar. With all my preaching, with all my effort, with all my education, with all my anointing, will you move your majesty? There are people come to church, the same decision they brought to church is the same decision they take out of church. Isaac was a son of promise. God jumped into his room quickly so that the promise may not die. He said, Isaac, don't follow them. That is for somebody. You are different from them. You have the sure message of David, they don't have it. If you go with them, you will be messed up. Separate yourself unto the Lord and I will be your God and I will do wonders in your life. And when you obey me, I will bless you. You will begin, you will continue, you will become. Bible says, until he became. Listen, there is a blessing that will take you through the process and deposit you on the, at the finishing line. Became means it is finished, it is done, it is settled forevermore. I see people, you start posing when you are still becoming. Money, oh, T, oh, T, real life. I've seen people becoming, uh, I'm not, cont- uh, begin. I see people continue, but they never became. You can begin, you can continue, it doesn't mean you will become. Actually, let me tell you, the father's journey is not beginning to continuing. It is between continuing and becoming. And only God can take a man there. This man began. He continued until he became. I like the Bible says until. Which means there were many disagreements. There were many satanic attempted interruption until he became very prosperous because he moved will my preaching move you the decisions you've taken will you alter them when you hear thus say the lord to move means that you will leave some things behind you leave some people behind to move means that you acknowledge that God has a superior um, wisdom to yours and a superior understanding. To move means that you will have to humble yourself and say, I didn't quite get it right. This man moved. The message Bible puts it another way. The message Bible in verse 6 says, so Isaac stayed put in Gerar. Meaning that when God, when there's a famine, God wants to instruct you, wants to guide you. There is a response he's trying to elicit from you. In, in some cases, it's for you to move. In some cases, it's for you to go. In another person's case, it is to stay. Maybe you are already where God wants you to, but you are thinking of jumping out. You're thinking of doing something else. Bible says, so Isaac stayed put in the place God told him to sow. And the thing about sowing is, it is not the time you sow that you reap. It takes a while. 
And sometimes some people say it doesn't matter and they have moved and somebody else will come and reap what you sowed. In Isaiah 55 verse 2 that I read to you when I was talking about the sure message of David on Sunday, it was Isaiah 55 1 to 3 verse 2b is very instructive. Isaiah 55 2b, it says listen carefully to me. Particularly in the time of famine. Listen carefully to me. So that you will eat what is good. So that your soul will delight itself in abundance. You know. It's okay to listen to people. But never equate the voice of a man to the voice of God. He says, the Lord will guide you continually and he will satisfy you in famine. He will strengthen your bones, bring health to you. You will be more than a garden. You'll be a watered garden. Can I tell you something? If you look at grass, if you go to somebody's house, you see green grass. It's very good during rainy season. You know what happens during dry season? Have you seen government grass during dry season? It becomes brown. It becomes dusty. You don't even want to walk through it because by the time you walk through it, all your shoes, your, 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 your trousers will be brown because dust just jumps out once you step into it. You know why? It's still grass, but it's not watered. May our glory not become like that. This grace means there used to be grace, but it does, it's not there anymore. The, you see, a lot of people are gardens. And as long as the economy is booming, I'm laughing. I say, you're a garden. Okay, we will see. Let's wait for the weather to change. You will see the difference between a garden and a watered garden. The Bible says, when you listen to the Lord, when you let him guide you, you'll be a watered garden whose source of water does not fail. May this be our experience in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about thriving in tough times. Tough times make people go to the Philistines. You go and form an accord with people you should not form an accord with. You do things that you should never have done. You go to places that you normally didn't used to go. Because as I'm speaking, some people's hearts, bam, bam, and you're trying to sit down. See, farming is not meant to kill you. God is the God of all seasons. He's the God of rainy season. He's also the God of dry seasons. But in dry season, our well-being will not dry out. It will not dry up in Jesus' name. Can I tell you something? The children of God are supposed to show during tough times. People should look at you and say, there is an unknown law that works in your own life. Why is your own different? And God is telling me to tell you that I can show up for you if you will allow me to guide you. And one of the ways God will cause you to thrive in, in, in a farming or difficult times is exemplified in the life of Elijah. God said to Elijah, go to Zarephath. I have prepared a helper for you there. Throughout the season of farming, she will feed you. If God told you that, you'll be excited until God tells you the person is broke. If God says to you, the person that's going to help you through this dry season is so, 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 but the person is broke. Will you believe it's God? You probably bind that voice, but that's what he told Elijah. Elijah went and dwelt there. He says, the person that will help you is a widow. Never judge God's power with the eyes of a man. God spoke to Elijah. You see, he says, my ways are not your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways different from you. He says, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. 
In the farming, three and a half years, there's not going to be no rain. It says, arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow. A widow is a broke person. A widow is somebody that needs help. You know, God, God, God is so much God, he can do anything with anything. Even the widow did not know she had the capacity to feed this man. He just spoke the word to her. The Bible says throughout the famine, she, her son, and Elijah, they were good. The cruise of oil and the flour did not run dry. You know, I prefer a God that does great things with small things. So that when I'm talking about him, it is clear that this is not the work of a man. Glory to God. May we not refuse the help of the Lord. Imagine Elijah saying, I am not going. What am I going to do with a widow? Never judge the power of God by the container he's using. I'll give you an example. The widow that was broke, they were going to take her sons into slavery and so on. She had nothing. She went to the man of God. The man of God said, what do you have? He says, a cruise of oil. You know what that means? It's almost an insult to your sensibility. So what am I going to do with that? He said, go and borrow drums. Big drums. He says, not a few. Everywhere. He says, that small bottle, you will use it to fill a drum. The blessing is in the bottle. Eh? The harvest is in the drum. If you are waiting for God to show with a drum, all you, you may miss God because all he's holding his hand is a bottle. But the bottle will fill the drum and fill all the drums. Imagine the disciples. They say, what are we going to do with five loaves and two fish? They'll have missed the miracle. I'm speaking volumes of revelation. Bible says he does not, he, de, he uses the despised things to do the marvelous things. God does not need a big thing to do a big thing. Otherwise, he will be a man. And when the promise of God, our fathers, the 12 tribes of Israel, were going to go through a famine. It was a famine so bad that even kingdoms will collapse. Can I tell you something? The covenant of God is so, is so solid before the famine, he had sent Joseph to Egypt where all the food was going to be. And the people he was sending help to did not even know God was on their side. The Levon brothers had committed atrocities. The famine was so bad, they had to go to their enemy to go and buy food. May life not send us in that direction. And when they were going there, they didn't even know what their fate would be. But you know how God loves us? Before the famine started, he has sent Joseph. When they got there, they thought they were going to buy. He gave them the food and put their money back in their bag. You know why? Because he understood that God sent him as a helper to the 11 tribes so that the promise of God will not die. You are the promise of God to our generation. You will not die. What am I saying? See, in, in Genesis 45 verses 6 to 7, Joseph, who was sent as a helper, said for these two years, the famine has been in the land. And guess what? And there are still five years more in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. But the good news is God sent me before you. To preserve a posterity for you in the earth. And to save your lives by a great deliverance. What am I saying to you? Child of God. If you serve God. If you walk with God. If a famine is coming. Not only will he give you more than enough. He will reserve a helper for you. You know what? Your confidence should change. I may not know who. But I know there is somebody. The widow struggled with the help. But she still did it. Joseph did not struggle. 
He put them in Goshen. You know, I told you, I said, if everything about your life, eh, you can show that you earned it, you are not a child of grace. Help is something you did not work for. Help is something you did not plan for. They went to buy money. They went to buy food. They got food. Their money was in their bag. And they now said, go and bring all your family, your children, your servants, and put them in the best of land for decades free of charge. No food. No, they didn't buy food. They didn't buy land. They didn't buy house. At the behest of God. Can I tell you something? I'm different from everybody else. You know why? Because I know God has raised helpers for me. Wherever I go, I will meet helpers. And if one helper fails, God will raise another one. Because he made a promise. He says, I will satisfy you in drought. I will cause your hell to bounce back. He said to me, he said, tell them that you will be like a watered garden. It means that if somebody is watching you saying that let's wait till dry season. We'll go see what thing will happen. Dry season will come. My grass will still be green. Yeah. Old age will come. I will still be rejoicing. Yeah. Glory be to God. David knew what I was talking about. That's why he wrote Psalm 23. He said, because the Lord is my shepherd. Because he guides me. I have everything I need. In closing, it says goodness and mercy. It don't say I pursue them. Goodness and mercy is actually blessing and grace. They follow me all the days of my life. And that's why I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you want to clap, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, somebody. For his goodness, the God of all seasons, in and out of season, through good times and tough times, he never fails. Somebody, his loving kindness, his tender mercies, his grace, his provision, his forgiveness, oh, yeah, his patience, his gentleness. Can you lift up your hands and let's just pray. Just. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. I just want you to love the Lord this morning, knowing that this famine is not going to put out your light. Suddenly you know that he has placed a helper for you somewhere waiting for you to show up. this morning is there someone who has just discovered the friend that's ticket closer than a brother is there someone here who has just suddenly realized that I don't need to walk through life alone is there someone here who realizes that there's a God of all seasons and today you want to come to him and say Lord I'm the one you're looking for I'm the one to benefit from these sure mercies of David. Is there someone here who has even walked away from the Lord? And suddenly you realize that you walked in the wrong direction and you want to come back. You want to come back with all your heart. You want to come back with all your soul. 
If there is any such person, I want you to come to the altar. I want to pray with you. It is important I pray with you that the experiences of your life may begin to change and be shaped by the word of God that I have brought for you this morning. Anyone here want to meet the Lord? Anybody want to come back to the Lord? Wherever you are, just walk towards me. I want to pray with you before I leave. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else coming? Just come to the Lord. This is the promise of God for you. This is a word that he sent to you. That you may be able to recognize him. That your heart may leap with joy again. Wherever you are. Even if you're far away, I wait for you to come and come and be reconciled to the Lord. God bless you as you come. your sins, ask to be reconciled to him. I want to pray for two people. You lost hope. You lost hope. I don't even know why you came to church today because you didn't even come believe him. You lost hope. Come, I want to pray with you. doesn't mean we didn't have hope but hope dies like Lazarus Mary and Martha said if you had come our brother would not have died I don't know what died but the same God who came four days late and yet still brought back hope and brought back celebration I call on him the Christ of our God. The wisdom and the power of God rolled into one. That what you did in the house of Mary and Martha, you do in the house of this one. Yeah. Bring hope alive. Bring back celebration. Yeah. They came to church, but they didn't want to roll away the stone. But I made a call to come forward. It is like rolling away the stone. The Bible said Jesus cried out and said, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came hobbling, hobbling out. The impossible happened. Because with God, nothing shall be impossible. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that the testimony will abound. Amen. To these ones who have rolled away the stone. They will not have to hold their nose because of the stench. Because God will bring new life. To my brothers who have come.
to reconcile with the Lord. May the, may the Lord embrace you. And whatever he says to you, I pray that you will hear him and you will do what he said. And I know in his faithfulness, you will start a new life. New joy. New beginning, new things. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. That tough times are not meant to break us. That in the midst of the toughness, your goodness will resonate in our situation. Amen. We'll come back up never to be knocked down again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, blessed God. I worship your majesty. Thank you for what you have done. To you alone be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I'm going to ask you to be seated.